But just, hope hope has hardly anything to do in this. Neither does fucking Ant Man. Ant Man has more, but yeah, yeah, Michelle Pfeiffer has the most to do. And then fucking Cassie. Like. Yes, I, I, yeah, I think Cassie's a larger character than Ant Man in this too. Oh, and they're setting it up like for the next generation too. But mm. like, I don't know. Michael Douglas doesn't have a lot to do. Yeah, I mean, he's really off screen a lot, and he never even kind of suits up at all. Really. I, Bill Murray was just disappointing and like obvious. Like, <laughs> I like that he got killed by his that. hair looked an awful like you could tell the cgi like green CGI screen shit around his hair well that's it looked my awful. biggest issue i just felt like they were in front of, it just felt like i'm just distracted by the fact that they're standing in front of a screen it's like, he just felt like they were trying to recreate what they did with jeff goldblum and ragnarok and they did not oh, do okay. it well movies on video cassette welcome to strange glow video guys i'm being drunk and watching rubbish we're oozing with VHS, horror, nostalgia, and more. New better block glow in the dark. After it comes in videotape, you can get a glow in the dark hand puppet from the movie Casper. And now, your hosts, Alec, Justin, and Nick. Hey, you're not allowed to rent here anymore. Yeah! Hello, and welcome to Strange Glow Video. Tonight, we've got a fun episode ahead for you. And so, we're going to talk about some things and stuff. Things and stuff. Ant-Man 3 is the main thing, but we got a little bit of news Ant to chat Man about. I think you three. mean Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ant-Man what 3. What kind of though. a jackass would call it Ant-Man 3? The Wasp has at least three <laughs> lines in it. Don't forget. The guy that doesn't want to write out that many fucking words. That's true. Because that's what I saved the file as, Ant-Man 3. And that's what I wrote my notes as. I was just like, <laughs> yeah, God damn it, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. I'm like, that's just too The next much. one's going to be Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, next level 3. Or like, you know, just yeah, going to keep going. Something next... Something next. Ant Man forever. Uh, anybody got any pickups they want to go through first? I didn't bring any. Nick didn't bring his pickups. But I have some. I got a tape called More Dinosaurs, and it's a documentary about dinosaurs. It's I can't grab it. It's at the top over there. Oh, we see. can see it, but you can't see it. Well, maybe I'll yeah, post that on TikTok. So. And the other thing I grabbed was a book about the Loch Ness monster. It looks pretty <laughs> sick. What the. Oh yeah. Did it cost? I also got 350? two movies at uh, Goodwill on DVD because they're ones I just didn't have, and one of them we talked about last week actually, Lady in the Water. Okay. Mm. I picked that up at Goodwill for three bucks on DVD, mm. and I was like, you know what, this it's not a bad movie. It's not like great, but it's doing some weird shit. But it's uh, I did I had a decent time watching it. It's not I'm not dying to rewatch it, but and then the other one I picked up was uh, Brokeback Mountain just because I didn't have it so. Hell yeah, that's a good one to add to collection. Uh, yes. So if you can see me on camera right now, I'm wearing a Strange Glow Video logo shirt available on Tee Public under Strange Glow Video. So please go check us out. Support Link the in show. description if you're listening to this or if you're watching on YouTube. And I also took our old Jurassic Park logo that was inspired by the Lost Boys, a little mashup I did, and I just made it say the Lost Boys now. So that's available on there as well. I got that on a white shirt looks beautiful very comfortable this is a higher end t-shirt so it costs a little bit more but t public's always having sales so you can get a shirt as low as like 16 bucks plus shipping Ooh, that's soft this one was like 21 but that's it's like a recycled material. and higher it's so soft it makes me hard exactly um other than that i've just been getting a lot of nerdy electronic shit for the proton pack upgrades but hmm. wanted to show off a little upgrade i did here today though just because i was fucking bored and i made some lights so i've got my nest advantage controller and i installed some led lights that actually power up now. There was previously uh, LEDs on there, like they uh, show in the movie. They don't, weren't ever turned on in the movie that I can recall, but I've got this on there now. So, fun shit. Indeed. Um, also in the news this week is we have a collaboration with Phantasm Toys coming out. Ooh, this is a big one. Uh, alien life form ghost, and it's it's basically an alien ghost that sort of resembles. Someone you may know from the planet Melmac, Gordon Shumway. For legal purposes, it is not him. Uh-uh. But it does resemble him. And he comes with a beautiful VHS tape with a Strange Glow video label that he will stand on as he will be a glow-in-the-dark yes. uh-huh. figure. Now, uh, Phantasm Toys is always doing amazing things, so in addition to that collaboration, they also have their... Uh, bathtub. I forget the, what's the name of that one, Nick. You just said it. Terror tub, right? That's, terror tub. Yeah. yeah. The terror tub that. is looking amazing. They got a class ten version of that coming. The teletub. And uh, 
that's amazing i'm excited about that one because it's got the removable sponge and rubber ducky and the slime comes out of the bathtub so it's uh it's, it's a beautiful a piece topless sigourney weaver uh no she's wearing that pointy bra in that scene they're always fucking us with the accessory sets they'll get us later with that yeah that's in the, ex- the Terror Tub accessory set comes with the topless um, Sigourney Weaver with removable bra. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I'm sorry. But it's like I'm a bar- not, it's I'm like not a- besmirching your company. I'm sorry. It's like a Barbie underneath, though. It's like it doesn't show anything. Like you take the bra off, she and has no n- nothing there. She has no nipples. So you are inclined to leave the bra on because it helps the imagination. Yes, it keeps the illusion going. It's a terrible thing. It's like beautiful lingerie that you hate to take off of a woman, you know? Isn't it? It's such a predicament. It's like, God damn it. Let me just pull this shit to the side. That's why they made see-through stuff and, yeah, pull it <laughs> to the Nick, side. Nick just his <laughs> face. Ew. Yeah, you need... You need the lingerie that just has a hole for the vagina. Like, straight up, it just doesn't cover the vagina. It's just as sexy in general. Crotchless. And then, it, exactly. And it also has nipple holes, so you can get to the nipples. Sometimes their pussy just eats away and there's a hole... <laughs> oh no no he can't no. even say anything about that it just burns the hole in there <laughs> if you got a burning sensation nick i suggest you see a doctor is that not normal Ooh. depends were you sounding before mm-hmm. you may not have properly lubricated <laughs> before you sounded gee scoob uh, exactly so the ectomobiles arrived in england you seen this you heard about this at prestwick airport in the uk yeah it's pretty exciting yeah I don't know why in my notes I said Ecto 1A. Was it the original? Wasn't it originally the Ecto 1A though? The car that they used for Afterlife, wasn't that right? That was one of the cars they converted. Yes. So technically, you're not incorrect, I guess. There's three. They only shipped one over so far. Which? Um... Who gives a fucking shit? <laughs> wow, that's really uh really go getter there. Ghostbusters. Fucking London. A, man. All right. What else? Letterbox application. The Letterboxed app. I just started using that. I saw the uh, Yes Have Some episode where they had McKenna Grace on, and they are talking about tracking the movies they've seen in there. And You can just do that on Google. McKenna Grace said that she could do that, or she was doing that for her watch list. It's kind of, you can do it socially, too. You can do it with your friends, so you can compare and talk about movies together, I think, is the, the point of it, too. You can do, yeah, and you can do movie reviews in there. Nick's not into it just because it's it's more things than Nick. Nick is not a fan of apps and social things, I don't think. I'm not a fan of people. Yeah. I, I mean, I get and that. And I don't care what they're doing. I just like, to, when, I'm, when I'm dealing with people personally, I want them to be of like-minded and at least have some things to talk about. Well, my you thing is, I mean? for us doing this podcast or this program, whatever we want to call it at this point, program. since we're doing video... Uh, I just thought it'd be nice to people who can like see what I'm watching outside of the show because I'm watching all kinds of shit. Like I've watched four movies in the yeah, last. Yeah, follow us on Letterboxd if you does, want. I'm at Ecto Violence. Does it have I'm, porno? I did not look for. Can porno. you list the porno you've been watching? That'd be good. Possibly. If not, you should make the Letterboxd what, for. Porno. But this thing, nobody watches porno movies anymore. They watch porno vids. It's like making. It's like reviewing. It's like comparing a YouTube. Uh, video to a movie is comparing well, they a porno could, well i mean they that's could a little... follow me on pornhub to see what movies i'm liking and... that's true give us your pornhub name so we can see all the weird shit you watch maybe if some of it's hot i don't know maybe i start <laughs> maybe i'm watching looking like out of curiosity it, and i'm like damn that's kind of mostly stepsister stuff so. well that checks out but that's what mostly what pornhub is so. yeah she's stuck in the dryer again that <laughs> stupid bitch <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> well unzip oh. sound some reason Pornhub doesn't consider that the R word. No. I mean, as long as you don't call it that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, hey, got and we have drinks. Is that right? Is drinks? We got yeah, we're going to do these beverages. for this first podcast. Is we'll do the other one on the other Easter one. Some Easter Pepsi? Yes, these are Eeps, Easter, and these are Ooh, actually... I got one right here. Peeps. Do we, are we pouring these in cups? Or? We, Six no, months from now, these, these right. probably would be like 10 bucks each on eBay or some shit, because yeah. this is a coveted weird soda, and it's very limited edition. Like, I had to go to High V specifically, and they only had one little end cap tiny thing of these. Zero grams of fat. I got a 10-pack of these tiny cans. It's artificial marshmallow flavored soda. Cola, yeah, we're going to give it a try. You want to do that right now? Yeah, we're going to open it up, and then I can talk about my next item while we try this out. I like the aesthetic of the little peeps. I don't like peeps themselves, but the aesthetic and the colors I love, so. 
I like the first bite of a peep. Mm. Ooh. It's not bad. That's what it I smells thought. Smells like a cola. Yeah, it You smells. can taste the marshmallow flavoring, but also just kind of tastes like candy-ish, so it's... It's almost got a toasted marshmallow flavor. It's got that artificial marshmallow flavor, which I don't mind. It's good. Marshmallow extract or something. It's not overbearing, but um, I kind of like that. Mm-hmm. It's pretty pretty good. Mm-hmm. That would make a really good mixed drink. Oh, Ooh, yeah. yeah. Put some vodka or maybe some... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe we, a rum. That. we don't have that. Is this vodka? No, you like to put vodka in your water bottles. I'll have to pick up another uh, pack of these. Only when you're driving, Nick. Mm. They do have these in the bottles, too, but I haven't seen the bottles. I'm sure as we get closer to the Easter season, we'll see them more. Yeah, Easter's April 9th. 8th, 9th. Yeah, that's not something I'd want to drink year-round, but it's the novelty of it's decent enough. I enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Better than I thought it would be, honestly. Yeah, honestly, yeah. It, they should market a Ghostbusters marshmallow-flavored Pepsi. Just to say fuck you to Coca-Cola, who used to own Columbia Pictures? <laughs> well, just, you know, because why the fuck not? They could just do a plain marshmallow flavored cola. Then you can make a mixed drink with uh You mean marshmallow flavored soda? Don't they still yeah, have yeah. some kind of relationship with Coke though? Cause isn't that why in Answer the Call they had Papa John's pizza, but then they had like plain cups because Papa John's is Pepsi, but they couldn't have Pepsi in the movie. Uh, no, I think that was just based on some of that because it was Papa John's in the United States, but I think in the UK it was Little Caesars. Oh god. So they had a Little Caesars logo with a proton. Pa- well, he's wearing a proton pack, and so they hmm. digitally edited those, or they did different takes of the film with um, Little Caesars box. I got a UK. pizza box from the Batman, and a couple Stranger Things ones from Domino's. Hmm. Yeah, I remember you getting that. I, yeah, it's like I feel like a hoarder, mm-hmm. but it's like, nah, these are these are actually things like I could stop hoarding them, and if I threw them away, it would be a bad for me. Get off my he, list, Nick. Oh, what the fuck is that? He's trying to read your doctor notes. AMC. No, patient point. has AIDS. <laughs> no, the next item I'm going to talk about, because we'll talk, the la- that's the last item you're just looking at. I didn't write them down in order. So does anybody remember when Jurassic Park toys were very popular? You know, Jurassic Park <coughs> celebrating its 30th anniversary this year. 30? I'm not watching it again. No. Well, we just watched it, so. <laughs> Where's the title? No. Do you not like that movie? Not enough to watch it this much. Yeah, you watch Ghostbusters oh. all the time. Not really, but I. Could, I mean, I don't really watch it a bunch anymore it. either. Like, but Jurassic Park, I I can still watch more. But it's more of a throw on in the background thing, unless it's like been a long time makes me, since I've sat down. And Ghostbusters watched still it. makes me laugh, so I do get something out of it. Oh, I love quoting Jurassic Park. I love the whole fucking thing. It's beautiful. Uh, don't mind our esteemed guard dog. Is that? You can go check and see if something's up. Is that Booger? Yeah. Make sure the door's not open out there. He's barky today. Hurry up. Yeah, so uh, since Nick doesn't care about Jurassic Park, it's good that he's leaving this moment anyhow. So they have the uh, Jurassic Park 93 collection coming out by Mattel. And they basically stole the color schemes from some unreleased prototype material from the Kenner Jurassic Park line from 93. When they were going to re-release like the uh, Jungle Explorer with a new paint job, the dark paint job. Hmm. The different color paint jobs and some of the dinosaurs that they never released. At least for that wave. That's about when the dino trackers came out. This other wave of repainted vehicles never hits shelves, though. So for whatever reason, they put that out in a little Kenner toy catalog, and no one could ever find them, and they're even on the backs of some of the carded figures. Nick, what the hell's going on out there? I don't know, but I locked the door. <laughs> well, so. All right, good. There's a shit ton of the... Uh, Jurassic Park 93 collection toys coming out. So I thought that was pretty exciting. Are they re-releasing Jurassic Park toys? No, they got a new 93 collection coming out, so they've got basically their take on the old Kenner classics, so they got um, um, Ian Malcolm comes with a Dilophosaurus, but he also comes with a gun that with like a green too? blaster. No, this is all huh. Mattel, so they're ripping off the they're mm. basically doing what um, Hasbro did with the Power Rangers line when they got it for the Fliphead Rangers and all that stuff. Kind of reimagining their own take on those classic figures. So, mm. a worse take. Mm. Let's be honest. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, because Bandai was re releasing those, and there's been so many different Power Rangers figures yeah. released. It's insane. But no, I thought it was pretty neat. Some of the stuff they've got coming out, it's kind of fun. Like Ian Malcolm comes with the Series 2 
blaster weapon that he had with like a green translucent missile. Mm -hmm. But he also has <laughs> this glider that was a Lost World Jurassic Park glider figure that he had, which I bought not too long ago or a couple years ago, I guess, at this rate. So it's some fun stuff. Uh, pretty excited to see that hit the shelves. Are we drinking these Shastas too? You can have one if you want. Mm -hmm. What else are we drinking? Oh, the cream. We're drinking that in the next pod. Though. That's on the next one. Cream. So, yeah, so uh, that's basically the news besides Alec and I went to see, well, we all went to see Ant-Man. Ant-Man and the Wasp. Quantumania. It was a movie. Colon. No, so my thing is, so I went to a 12, 15 Are we PM talking about showing. that now? We're jumping into the last topic before that. You're going to talk about AMC. We're going to talk about AMC, the state of movie theaters and everything else. Which is, I went to B&B. &B. B and b was $3 more for the same time frame. So I went for free. Well, boy, aren't you special? Mm -hmm. I went to AMC at a 9.45 p.m. showing on a Sunday night. And Alec and I had the same fucking problem. 12.15. Guess what time the movie fucking starts? 12.40 fucking 5. I've been bitching because, about that forever. That's just every time. Well, I feel no, like it went from It went from about 15 to 20 minutes at any given time, and it's I feel like, like it's 30 minutes hour I literally counted the trailers. It was 10 movie trailers plus the two amc yeah. fucking sizzle well they got so they many show. comic book movies coming out and they're like this is a comic book movie so they're probably they only put two those. two you only had two comic movies flash and guardians three yeah I, I had shazam i didn't have that no they didn't show that guardian I'm sure we saw the same set of trailers but i didn't so. have flash so i don't know i don't know yeah there was fucking Oppenheimer and a few others too i, I have, can't even I remember that all. either yeah open yeah but i was pissed because i was like jesus christ i don't mind 15 to 20 minutes but the 30 minute on after top the fifth of that, trailer, I was like, all right, let's move along. Mm -hmm. And then after the sixth, I was like, you're kidding. And then the seventh one started. Well, they, and I'm like, what the fuck? Well, and then should, the eighth and the ninth and well, then, then literally the tenth. Trailer start time and then actual movie start time when they list. Oh my God. I don't mind, that was, I don't mind trailers so much. That's it's, why it's I only uh, show up. The movie starts at 9.45. I'm showing up at 9.45. I don't mind trailers so much as the bullshit ads like for cars and shit that I don't like. Well, Nick will always give me shit because he'll be like, "Well, you, you always show you up get, late. You get like fucking. You're lucky that you don't miss any of the movies sometimes, though. Yeah, because they show too many fucking trailers, and I watch all the trailers online usually, so I don't mind well, seeing them on the screen. But I'm not going to see them. What for the annoys first time me there. about trailers? Remember when they were playing the uh, Morbius trailer for like two years? And mm -hmm. It was the same one every single time you went to the movies. That annoyed me. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But they don't need to play the dual AMC fucking videos each time. Like, I don't care about your cola machine and mm -hmm. the Nicole Kidman <laughs> video I've seen about enough of. Are we going to talk about the premium seating? Yeah, the, so the middle, I'm trying to get charge. tickets online and I'm comparing the local. There's a local theater here that's run. And then there's this AMC that's in the next town over. That That's the one I went to because online ticket prices... If I bought a seat that wasn't in the good section and then just sat my ass in the good section because fuck you AMC, uh, it was like a buck cheaper than going to the local place here because even though their tickets were listed as twelve ninety nine for an adult with online fees, that always comes out to eighteen some bullshit, which is about what I paid at AMC anyway. And uh... well, it's just asinine. So you're doing reserve seating pretty much every theater nowadays, right? There's a few here and there that don't have the required yeah and of that you know like Screenland Armor locally owned and operated theater doesn't require that same price tickets all the time or whatever but you're looking at 30% off an AMC ticket for the matinee or whatever because it was early and <sighs> the last two times I went to B&B &B, there was no one to even ensure that I even bought a ticket like I could have just not even paid for the tickets yeah when I saw uh, Infinity Pool, and there was only one other couple in there, and I could have just went in there and not well, paid for anything. They just got to figure this out, right? I mean, we all know that theaters make most of their money on like concessions and mm -hmm. everything else, but when you're gouging for the price there and you're charging me a, a two dollar fee, right? Because it's, my... it's already so high to put an extra dollar on a particular seat. Yeah. Well, like I let my AMC um, Stubbs premiere lapse just because I haven't been going to the movies that much. Right? Since the baby arrived, I've only been to the that theater baby. twice. Oh. The last thing I saw in theaters was Clerks 3. So, I guess I did see... Well, that wasn't even in a movie theater. Clerks 3. Yeah. 
Well, I guess I did see Silent Night, Deadly Night, but who did mm. I go to that with? I can't even remember. Me and Alec. We paid to watch it at the theater. Yeah. Silent Night, Deadly Night? <laughs> You mean Violent Night? Yeah, 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 whatever. Oh, yeah. Jagged, green <laughs> You're talking about like a 40 <laughs> fucking year old movie, and I'm like, what? You went and saw that without me? <laughs> like, where? At Screenland, I'm thinking? He's like, what an asshole. Have they done that? That's from me making the jizz video of me seeing yeah. Elvira and oh. coming <laughs> silly string. <laughs> silly string. I'm like, what the fuck is sticking to your ceiling in here? And he stuck that Glow in, in the dark silly string. You stuck that in your butt. I have. Smell it. No, so I let that lapse, but a $2 fee to book your ticket online and then taxes yeah. on top of that so like when you say that this movie is this ticket price you're lying mm -hmm. because then you go to the next screen your ticket price should be all fees and taxes included i mean it's the same thing with ticket master you're just like fucking nickel and diamond people here mm -hmm. yeah so they need to figure that out because they're like well no one's going to the theater well no shit motherfucker it takes you know, if you took a whole family out to a movie on a Friday night, you're looking at a hundred bucks if you take four to five people and then just for your snacks tickets. and you think, yeah. So, and then they keep coming out with all these gimmicky popcorn buckets. Now, granted, I got the Ecto one, but that's been a thing since. So they had the Ant Man. They've had them for well, years now. When I worked at them in 2017 at AMC, it was a thing with every fucking big movie that came out. Okay. So like all the Star Wars movies had three or four different fucking styles of popcorn buckets like an r2d2 a c3po oh okay yeah you're you right, know yeah. all those different ones and then literally it's pretty much anything that was big and worth marketing like there was shit coming out for every time but i get that that's easy to mark up too i want the so scream one. Oh yeah that looks there's cool. a ghost face one yeah, i'll get it eventually looks sick but you're looking at it and you're like you guys are not doing anything to draw people into the movies like i get it and like, and then the more you charge for tickets, the harder it is for me to buy anything snack wise in there. Yeah, you're pricing people out of the movies, and like, movies are supposed to be an escape. And I bought those fucking popcorn tubs for us, and she was like, I, "You want me to put the popcorn in there?" And I was like, "Fuck off with the popcorn! I don't even want it." Yeah, <laughs> and I think they were just like thinking I was weird. We don't want the butter in our ectomobiles. Yeah, like you can put me. A yeah, that's basically what I was like. I just don't want to dirty this fucking thing mm. up with that. Yeah, give me shit. a disposable bucket, and I'll take that separate and we'll eat the popcorn while i work yeah i still got that around here oh it's some little box but i think movie theaters got to figure that out because if you want people to go in there and then amc is trying this real controversial like pay for premium seatings you're like so that genuinely pissed me off when that's i saw where it, everyone like, wants to sit why not keep the price the same and charge less for the shitty seats where you gotta stick your fucking head well, like dog. because Is everyone, it? the way they announced it, they should have said off-centered viewing discount on tickets is what they should have marketed that as. Instead of paying a premium for premium seating. They're just fucking idiots. They don't know how to market shit. Yeah. And they wanted to increase ticket prices, so they increased ticket prices only for the seats that are most desirable. Mm -hmm. So. You know how much I sacrificed? But if I look at the middle of the day, I'm going to choose the ticket like Alec did on the very side and sit in the middle if no one else has bought a ticket. No one else had bought a ticket when I did it, and then a couple came and sat in the row in front of me, and some old guy by himself sat in the row behind me. So I was literally at perfect eye, because that's what you want. You want to be able to look straight forward mm -hmm. and see the mm -hmm. movie in the exact center of the screen. Mm -hmm. Well, in the hand railings in some of the theaters... Like, when I bought my ticket, like, they don't show you where the hand railing is or anything like that mm. on the oh, rows. Yeah. So I buy my ticket, and there's a handrail, right? Just kind of, if once mm. I, when I was sitting up, I was fine, but when I reclined my chair, I, like, I kind of had to lean to the one side, and I'm like... It doesn't show you a handrail, but it shows spaces and chunks, usually, on at least AMCs. Yeah, so but I, not all AMCs have that tall of a handrail, though. Like, some of the other theaters, even at that Ward Parkway Theater I went to, don't have that. So it's just like... The hell are you guys doing? Yeah, that had that happened recently. You got to make this friendly for the moviegoer because everyone wants to go. I love going to the movies. It's one of my favorite things to do. Yeah, like uh, the Oppenheimer trailer, the sound is when I was like, okay, this oh, is yeah. dope. Like, yeah, I miss some movie theater shit, like with the floorboards and the mm -hmm. that fucking bass. Like, you know, you can get bass at home, but not fucking shake the whole house bass without annoying the fuck out of everyone else nearby. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, so we saw Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. Yeah. Starring Michelle Pfeiffer. Basically. Very much so. She is the main character. 100%. Oh, and then we got the whole controversy of Cassie being recast. Recastied. And so, per Marvel, you know, they didn't want to recast Chadwick Boseman. 
but they're okay with doing anyone else that they don't like as a person. So we got. Is that why they recast her? They didn't say why, mm-hmm. but the uh, Emma Furman was Cassie Lang in Endgame, and she didn't well, find out until she didn't find out she lost the gig until they announced it. Maybe at, it's uh, she's got a bigger role in this, and they need a better actor kind of situation, maybe. Well, they're usually planning ahead with their shit, so I was kind of surprised by this. Is what I'm saying, right? Maybe that girl didn't turn out to be a very good actor. Who knows? Like Tom Holland, they cast knowing that they needed Spider Man. So, yeah, I, uh, I just think it's kind of funny because Emma was closer in age to where Cassie would be, but Cassie's age would only be like sixteen in the movies. And yeah, isn't even that huge... actor in the her mid twenties in the new movie? The new one, yeah, she's 26, Jesus. and the girl she replaced is 21. And she's and, supposed to be 16 in the, the character? Yeah, and so the continuity of Cassie's character has always been screwed up because there's only supposed to be a two-year gap between the first Ant-Man and the second Ant-Man, even though I think and then the five she's jump. like 10 years older than something they mentioned in that one compared to being six. So there's an age gap there, and then you got the five-year blip and everything else. So you're, you're Yeah, this movie at, takes place in 2025. Yeah, so you're looking at basically somebody that should be a 16-year-old they don't explain any of that, and then she's just way ahead in her age, which Marvel's very careful about this, so it's just like, what were you thinking when you did all this? Yeah, it's a little weird to go from Ant-Man 1, and she's 6, and then this one, she's supposed to have grown all this stuff, and I get the five-year time jump, but it's just kind of like, these movies feel like they should be closer together than all that. Well, and look what you've done with Spider-Man. You know, I mean, you had to see Spider-Man finish high school after the blip, you can't tell me that you can't take that into consideration to have her be a proper high school age child for this. And then they cut so many characters out just because they didn't have room for it, like her mom and stepdad. And then the people that I really missed was the whole crew around Ant Man. So Luis, Kurt, and Dave. Yeah. Um, you really missed those. Now, Dave, David, um, who plays Kurt, actually voiced one of the characters. In this movie, and he's from uh, Overland Park, or he grew up in Overland Park. David Desmalchen, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh. he's in, he's in lots of stuff. I first yeah. recognized his face from Dark Knight. He's in that, the back of the thing. Yeah, it's really creepy. He has an interesting face. Let's put it that way. I forgot Don Cheadle was from Kansas City. Yeah, there's lots of people in the MCU from here. It's beautiful, but I mean, I just those are like that kind of comic relief that really balanced it out well and this movie really lacked the comedy but do we want to well they tried but here's the thing this movie felt like it was just visually i'm watching a guardians of the galaxy movie and it's irrelevant to me that you're in the quantum realm it just yeah, feels like it feels you're like in space. on an alien planet exactly that's, that's how I all it too. felt like you're you're doing too much down there well because they immediately <clears throat> retconned it literally, all of the aesthetics, I'm like, this is Star Wars, this is just Guardians of the Galaxy imitation. Mm. Well, you retcon what we already know about the Quantum Realm. Yeah. Right? Severely. Because we know that... Why did they not know these people were down there before? Exactly. And then... And she didn't tell him. she, she just kept it secret. She did, but no one else. She kept it a secret, but remember, Ant-Man was stuck in the Quantum Realm for... Yeah. Fine. And then the time skew, too. She was in there, and she, in this movie, says, I've been... I was down here for 30 years. So was 30 it? years for her equals 30 years. And Ant-Man was down yeah, there for exactly. five. But in, in Endgame, Ant-Man says five years felt like five hours for me. So, in theory... Well, that's the time dilation thing that they were talking about with the ants, right? Yes. But she, you know... Um, Michelle Pfeiffer's character did not go through that. Um, Janet mm. was her name. She used to be Wasp, so I guess she's the Wasp in the title because Evangeline Lily's Wasp well, technically has like three lines. There's two Ant Man, two Wasps, and then a Cassie. Yeah, right. and she's more just the Ant Man version. But Hope Hope has hardly anything to do in this. Neither does fucking Ant Man. Ant Man has more, but yeah, yeah, Michelle Pfeiffer has the most to do. And then fucking Cassie. Like. Yes. I, I, yeah, I think Cassie's a larger character than Ant Man in this, too. Oh, and they're setting it up, like, for the next generation, too, but, mm-hmm. like, I don't know. Michael Douglas doesn't have a lot to do. Yeah, I mean, he's really off screen a lot, and he never even kind of suits up at all. Really. I, Bill Murray was just disappointing and, like, obvious. Like, <laughs> I like that he got killed by His that. hair looked fucking awful. Like, you could tell the CGI, like, green the CGI. screen shit around his they hair. Sh- well, that's 
It looked my awful. biggest issue. I just felt like they were in front. Of, it just felt like I'm just distracted by the fact that they're standing in front of a screen. It's like, he just felt like they were trying to recreate what they did with Jeff Goldblum in Ragnarok, and they did not oh, do it him. well. Like you know what I mean? Like bring in a really charismatic, weird enig- uh, yeah, he enigma felt, celebrity. You know, he, f- he felt toned down for Bill Murray too. I thought. Well, he did a good job, but the characters that were in the quantum realm to me were all. There's just too many different types of looks that didn't how, make any sense. Like, why there, are there all these? Humanoids? Why would there be humans down there? Yeah. yeah, Bill Murray looks like a humanoid, even though he says he's not. And then no, like, he, okay. he says, and he's like, yeah, well, no, but like, I got a dick though because I was fucking Michelle Pfeiffer. Well, he's like, it. technically, he's a human, but I don't, you know. Yeah, but he said because he has a dick. He's like, I'm a human where it counts, like you know, because <sighs> cock. I yeah. fucked your wife, dude. Like Which that's is, a weird fucking scene. Mm-hmm. This yeah. whole movie's weird. Nothing like, that just weird. doesn't f- fit the vibe of this movie. To I, have Bill Murray being like, yeah, I porked your wife. I, I I do believe the rumors that they did reshoots to inject some humor into this, because it's very tonally uneven. You're, then, not, you're like, not kidding. And then, like, the beginning and end, where he's doing, like, that narration, well, Paul happy Rudd's, music. Paul Rudd's not funny in this. No. And it's not his fault. It's just there's no f- funny things to do. Well, that's the thing. He still has charisma. I don't blame it have. on I don't blame it on the acting. Like yeah. they're going based off the script. There, well, that's the thing. Kang he did a great job acting, and I was thinking, you know, this is a good performance he's given, but it's also a little. What are we doing here? Like, it's, it's, yeah, where are, you, where are you getting at with him? I think they undermine the threat of him a bit too. Yeah, because we've already seen two Kangs basically now. Yeah, and the issue with that though too is they I get they didn't want to go just after and have the style of thanos right thanos was kind of the bullheaded giant asshole and then you know we've got the next main supervillain here and you're just dealing with all the variants of him so you know this one happened to be exiled like i didn't they probably would have had a better time putting kang in a role that's more similar to thanos's role in the first guardians of the galaxy in this movie mm-hmm. where he's not the big baddie, but he's the bad controlling your main villain. And you could have had just Modoc be the villain down there and yes. done him a little bit better, too, because let's face it. <laughs> I mean, I can get. But here's the thing the effects, <laughs> fine. I'm fine with it because it's weird enough. Like in this universe, you got to do something. I'm fine with it the way it looks, even though the giant face, like, I feel like they could have done better with it because <laughs> it, he could have just had his face and it looks like a completely CGI generated version of his face. I'm like, why? Well, and they squished him, so I think they did some yeah. mocap on his face, and they just squished it to fit the Modoc suit. And I'm like, you didn't have to do that. They could have done uh, done it a little bit better, but you know, I had fun. Like Modoc, just seeing Modoc was cool. He looked cool, I think. And besides, when he had his mask on, obviously, when he didn't, he should have been a little more monstrous, I think for sure. But like, I was like, okay, I can deal with this, I guess, because the way the MCU has to be, I get it. But, but. I also, well, I'll say this. I also didn't have a problem with it being Darren. No. A lot of the people were pissed off by that. Corey Stoll reprised his role uncredited, but why would he not want credit for that? They probably hid, hid that surprise. so that. Oh, for a. Uh, yeah. Cat, yeah, could be. So, because otherwise you'd know that he's coming back and then you'd. Just same with Nev Campbell being the killer in the new Scream movie. Yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll see. I'll laugh my ass off if that happens. Huh. <laughs> you know, you're just missing the charm. Like, Ant-Man is, like, the dad in this. But it's then boring. they also try to, like, build Cassie up as this, like, environmental activist. She's too much of a fucking genius for no reason, too. Yeah. She just built this quantum device out of her fucking ass, and she's never done anything before, ever, and she's going to jail. What? 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 Didn't say she, like, read his journal or... She read Hank's journal. Watch his journal. You can't fucking read a journal and learn quantum physics, you fucking teenage <laughs> asshole. They should call it a Mary Sue. Well, and what you always forget, too, because Ant-Man, they play as to be this dumb asshole. And like, I didn't like the way they portrayed him as like living off his glory of being Ant-Man. I'm like, that's kind of that version of Ant-Man is the Scott Lang. It's not like the Hank Pym that you know if you've read comics for forever, right? You know, that was an interesting choice to make him kind of be dumbed down in this to the some only degree. here's the funniest part of the movie to me the funniest thing that was supposed to be funny it was at the end of the movie when he's doing his talk and walk again and then he realizes i might have just fucked up really bad and then he's like all right fuck it never yeah mind. never mind i'm not gonna that's the only it. part i kind of like mildly chuck chuckled at 
like the Modoc thing, I didn't mind Modoc at all. But when Cassie doesn't like, you don't have to be a dick. And then like Modoc's wasted. Yeah, giving him what? like that. He has a change of heart. Yeah, I knew I, that was coming when when earlier in the movie he was like being very petty and shit. I was like, oh, they're gonna save this character instead mm-hmm. of just me being a weird killing thing. him off. But he also wasn't as threatening as you would expect like oh they're you're sending him and then the acronym stuff was like so cringeworthy of them spelling it out for you like three times yeah over and over and over and you're like i get modok's not a character that a lot of people know but for people like us if you watch the iron man show the iron man cartoon that was on around the same time fantastic four and spider-man were on you know my voice cracked again <laughs> nick just goes for it every time <laughs> oh, let's get back to the mystery van um yeah so I didn't like seeing Bill Murray. There were he was wasted, honestly. So was Modoc. Bill Murray, you just wasted by putting him as a nameless character. I mean, he had a name, Kryler, but I don't give a fuck about that. Like, it kind of felt like his uh, answer to call cameo. Yeah, I could see that. He just comes in and sits down. Well, no, I didn't like that they then dies. They killed him off right away by that. Yeah, <laughs> and you're like, okay, so you immediately remove that from anything else. And then they took the quantum realm and made it feel like the Ewok village. Yeah. Like with some of that. like it I just, didn't care about a single one of those characters down there. All those new characters down there. I think there, like, that just made the off. quantum mate, the quantum realm uninteresting. Because it's just like being on an alien planet. Well, yeah, because every yeah. other time just we've made seen... made it space. We've seen all the creatures that look like microscopic creatures that we see on Earth, right? That's what they show the quantum realm to be. And all of a sudden, they're like, hey, there's people walking around here down. And you're like, is this Land of the Lost? What are you, what are you doing? Why are we watching Land of the Lost now? I, w- yeah. I would understand if like people had been pulled in there from the real world. If they had, yeah, if they had, but they if you originated it, there, I don't understand that. But if you found a, a band of survivors that were trying to escape back out that same way, that would make sense to me, right? You could identify with those characters, mm-hmm. the humanoids at least. And also, yeah, Kang is kind of stupid as hell the way he has the thing and then decides he's not just going to escape immediately and is like, "I'm going to take everything with me." Are those all people that got banished? Yes, or somehow ended up there accidentally. His little facility just reminded me of, like, Planet Spaceball. It did, especially how, like, comically long it took to launch that thing. You're like, really? Mm-hmm. Like, we saw how powerful... She's gone from suck to blow. Well, we saw when he regains his suit and everything after they fixed it, like, this comes back together, like, super fast and amazing, and all of a sudden it's like... Going really slow and trickling and like, prepare to launch. Like, fucking launch this thing. Go already. Like, right? You're not ready to do this as soon as you had this in here? Yeah. Like, and I get that you're writing it, but... (sighs) I had fun. Talking about it more, I had a lot less fun than I thought I did. It was better than the last Thor movie. Yes. But that's not saying much. Yeah, I agree with that. I was kind of bored. It was better than Black Panda. Black Panda. (laughs) <laughs> Black, Panther, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. It's better than that, too. I still haven't seen that. Well, and that really pisses me off, because I think yeah. how good Wakanda Forever could have been, but then they had to rewrite everything because of Chadwick Boseman, right? They had a whole other script ready to shoot. Okay, we're not going to do that anymore. yet. We're over here recasting somebody else again, and I get it that you want to respect him, but at the same time, to tell the your show pertinent must stories... Go on. Yeah. Sometimes the oldest it line in Hollywood. <sighs> I mean... Don Cheadle wasn't the first replacement. Or he was. He was the first big replacement in the MCU, right? No. Uh, Hulk. Mark Ruffalo. Yeah. Hulk so we're not we're not used to that, but you can recast the Hulk, but you can't recast well, Black I mean, Panther. I mean, they didn't die, though. The previous actor. Yeah. So it's not like, so it's not like he got stuff. fired. I don't know. I just felt like... But at the same time, I thought, it is it still disrespectful to make the movie so quickly? <laughs> like... Like, yeah, I don't know. It's it's one of those things. Hollywood gives, doesn't give a fuck about. They could have waited though. longer and then recast them, maybe, and then still, you know. But. Yes, and they could have just waited on that movie for the. I'm next surprised story. Bob Gunton didn't play what? Uh, Ghost Chadwick yeah. Boseman. <laughs> <laughs> what was the urgency to make that movie? It wasn't necessary in the MCU at this point. Just they thought it? it was the relevancy. Like it wouldn't be relevant if they waited. Probably they wouldn't be able to milk the death of Chad Chadwick. Originally, Boseman, is that what you're saying? Not even that. I think the. Black Panther did amazing at the box office for not being an Avengers I'm, title. I'm pretty film. sure they canceled that Armor Wars show too, the Don Cheadle one, and he's Have just going to be in Secret Wars now. Okay. Yeah. So there's a bunch of shit like Disney's having all the financial issues, right? And then you're seeing it start to pan out, and you're like, you guys got overly ambitious, 
And then yet Disney has course corrected some for Star Wars, even though they don't have any. Well, you want to hear some more sad shit? Yeah. The guy who wrote Ant-Man Quantumania is the guy writing Kang Dynasty. The guy who wrote Loki, I think, is the writing Secret Wars. Interesting. I think. Um, I might be slightly wrong on that, but like that does not give me hope for that. If the guy who wrote Quantumania is writing an Avengers movie, I do not have hope for it. Well, I'm just curious of what they're going to do because they had all the shows announced for this year, and I don't know if they actually shot any of them. We got Loki Season 2, which was... They teased that at the end of the movie, so that's definitely coming. Yes, and and what? Secret Invasion? Yeah. and So I think those are the only two series that have actually been confirmed to stay on the slot. Agatha, I think, is coming out still. I'm not 100%. But it's not this year, though. I think this year, everything else that was supposed to be coming out this year is gone. And then Ironheart was supposed to have its own series after that, even after she got introduced in the uh, Wakanda Forever and... They kind of botched her character introduction, right? Isn't, like, isn't she supposed to be in like an Iron Man suit or something? That yeah, she's you? developed her own Iron Man tech, yeah. which is awesome. And that's based off the care. You know, she has her own comics of this, but the introduction was kind of wasted there. And then she's supposed to get her own show and it's canceled. And, you know, they just. I feel like it's not like everything they're doing is a miss because I really no. loved She-Hulk. And that's one of the most recent shows. But She-Hulk, besides from a small percentage of people was not understood by the fans and I don't think it's going to get another season. Yeah, it's not. And I don't think, but her character might show up. Somewhere. No, she's they're not. They only really did a series so they could introduce her and do her own thing. And then she's going to be in Avengers they movies and stuff. They didn't want her to do a second season. No, that from, well, the, that, from the plan is just launch she Hulk so that she can be in movies, which I'm, that's, well, that's fine. fine. I think gen- I really loved that show. I think so. generally I, I don't, I didn't need season two of Loki. Like no, kind of no, you didn't. Or Obi Wan, which is not Marvel. I don't know. I mean, they're doing a season two of that. I'm pretty sure. Oh Christ! I don't know if they've confirmed it, but they're open to it. Oh. <sighs> I just think they're at a point where they're realizing that was a thirty-first movie in the MCU, so it's like Ant Man. Yeah, you're getting to a point where it's like that plus the TV shows. Oh. Well, I think you're starting to get some fatigue, right? I remember There's like be. being super excited about all these, and now I'm just kind of like, okay. Yeah, I was stoked to see this movie like a year ago when I knew about it. Well, I like. And then the I Ant-Man saw the trailers, movies, and I was so. just like, "It's not funny." I don't know. Yeah, same with Guardians. Guardians Three. I'm the like, the movie I want to be funny is not funny, and then they make these other movies. They try to make these other movies funny. Yeah. The third movie doesn't need to be sad. Ghostbusters, Clerks, Guardians Three, Ant Man Three. You don't have to keep doing this. Yeah, you don't Hopefully, Guardians is still funny, though. It, some of it looks like there'll be some funny moments, but it's it's gonna be so fucking sad. You're killing off characters, and it's not gonna just be one. I don't think. I mean, in the trailer, I noticed for that watching that there's a scene where they're all carrying like Star Lord at one point in time, and you're like, okay, and then everyone just assumed that Rocket's gonna die because we've seen the Rocket meet his creator, and his creator's probably gonna wind up killing him off at some point in time in this movie. And you've seen that scene where Star Lord's like screaming, mm-hmm. like a little flash of it, like I that's a clearly someone's... somebody's dead scream. Yeah. Yeah. So like they've teased that in there, and right, it's gonna be <laughs> they're setting this up because James Gunn isn't gonna do another Guardians. You know, he's yeah. doing all the DC stuff now. So with well, this, some of them too are like Drax has said he's not coming back. He's done. Yeah, I think yeah. that was the plan. I don't, I don't know if yeah. the DC thing's influencing that or not. But even though they're just in, introducing other characters like Adam Warlock, right? And there's more than one version of some of the Guardians over the years. But I don't know. Well, they I guess they could do more Guardians of the Galaxies with different characters. But I'm trying to be optimistic about it, but at the same time, it's like okay. If they to showed us point. the old school one with Stallone, I'd be interested in that. That would be fucking awesome. And Michael Rooker, yeah. <laughs> you don't even have to have Michael Rooker in that. You just have Stallone and do their, what they're doing now would be fine. Well, that's but, a way to bring you know, Just because he's still old. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that would be interesting. So, but, so are you pumped for Phase 5? Does this get you pumped for Phase 5? I will say, after watching this... Well, I'm pumped for certain projects. Let's put it that way. Yes, at... Captain America 4, I think I'm going to like a lot. Mm. Um, Thunderbirds, I think, will be fun. But I'm I'm iffy on that, too, but we'll see. You've got to do some stuff you haven't done before. Harrison Ford is going to be in both of those. 
Okay. And that's another character that died and was recast immediately. Yep. So fucking prime example there. You can recast him immediately. Well, he was white. It doesn't make any sense though, man. Like <sighs> And he died of old age, not some and I originally horrible was like, disease or whatever. And I originally was like okay with the idea of them not recasting him right away. And I was like, okay, I that think he died of old age, right? He was old anyway. Uh, yeah, I think he had so. a nice long life. See, it wasn't a tragic death. I mean, Harrison Ford is older than he was, though. Harrison Ford might not survive. The, <laughs> the, the, might have, he might not again. survive the night. What are you talking about? Yeah, they're gonna have might to be dead in the morning again. Yeah, if I have anything to say about it, I don't know. <laughs> Especially if he goes flying anywhere, <laughs> or goes and steps in a Star Wars door. Yeah, that too. I don't know. You're just at a point where you recast people as you see fit, but throwing some of the story off in there. And even seeing Namor in there, like, I was kind of excited about that. And I'm like, I don't give a fuck. And I used to love seeing every Marvel movie and, like, taking in all the content. And, you know, you were talking about it the other day. It's like, now I'm only going to watch what gets my interest. But, yeah, they should have set up these people in the quantum realm before. So we gave a shit about them and established some characters. No, fuck that. No, but I mean, if they were going to do it. Yeah. My point is, though, is like Scott was in there for five years. Yeah. She doesn't have any knowledge of this, so he should have already known these people and met them. Yeah. What was special about where they are that he didn't find them before? He's at a different level of the quantum realm? Or? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, the first time we learn about the quantum realm, you keep shrinking and shrinking and shrinking forever. Here they find the bottom of the quantum realm where it's another universe. It's its own thing. So they've, they've retconned the shit out of this. And, you know, mm-hmm. that takes the fun away from it when you go, like, oh, well, we got to do this for the story. And you're like, eh. And it sounds like I really hated this movie. I didn't. It was okay. It was just, like, well, for what it was, it got the story across. I, and ne- I never want to watch it again. I don't have a need to watch it again. There's nothing. If I ever watch it out. again, it'll be in the future when I'm marathoning stuff and trying to get a full arc of when the new, like, when those new Avengers movies come out, I might come back to this and be like, okay, I'll rewatch it then just to get. So is he supposed to be the most powerful king that was supposed to be the most powerful king and he got took out by ants yeah and they're saying like and he got killed kind of in that now it'll be scene. now the threat is a bunch of or that was the mid credit <sighs> scene right the post credit was the this uh, is the first film of phase five right and then you get guardians three and the marvels is later this year which as well. the ant-man movies haven't been their most popular films like box office wise so to launch phase five and introduce the threat and then we're doing captain sure. america Thunderbolts and Blade next year. Blade. Like, is Blade going to be relevant to the overall? I don't know, and I kind of don't give a fuck. I love I vampire to. movies. I love Blade movies, but I mean, I don't know where you put Blade into this and add vampires to this. It's interesting because at this point, then you got to retcon everything and say, "Well, vampires were here all along, or they weren't." Secret Invasion and yeah. Loki are the only ones for 2023. The rest say to be determined. Yeah. What if season two, Ironheart, and what if season two seems like Echo? An odd one. Nobody wants an Echo show. What's, what's that again? Exactly. Yeah, I don't even know what the fuck that is. Echo's oh, a character oh. from um, Hawkeye, oh. Oh. the villain. Uh, one of them. Yeah, and uh, uh, Kingpin's supposed to be back for that. Yeah, they said. Yeah, yeah Ag- only- Agatha and Daredevil: Born Again. Daredevil, I'll probably watch. Daredevil, I'm excited about. But I would like to see Spider Man and Daredevil, like some of those New York people, kind of come across each other. That's what they said they, they were going to do. They that, were going to be the They were supposed to do a, an animated yeah. Spider Man series. I'm pretty sure they canceled that as well. Yeah. Like the it was supposed to be his freshman year in an alternate universe oh, yeah, with yeah, yeah. Norman Osborn instead of Tony Stark as his mentor. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure that's not happening. I don't know. It seems like things are in a mess right now. I know they got a plan, but I think they overdid it with Phase Four, and they just had too many hours of content. Like, I enjoyed the shows. And then Deadpool 3 is going to be in the next phase after this. It's 2024. With Hugh Jackman, too. Yeah, or and then I've been hearing rumors lately that we're going to see Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen back as... Well, I guess Patrick Derek. Stewart hinted that, right? Yeah, he he mentioned that recently, even though he said he was done. Isn't Ian McKellen, like, on life support? Well, him, him and Patrick Stewart are both in their 90s, are they not? Or damn near close to it. Like, they're both pretty old. <sighs> so, I think Patrick Stewart's still in his 80s. But I think Honestly, McKellen's they'd older. be just better using Michael Fassbender. I think he was a good Magneto, too. Yeah. I mean, I'm fine. I was okay with What's-His-Face's 
James McAvoy. He was a good Professor X younger, too. I liked both of them. You, you could use them again. I don't think... But here's the thing, and that's all, I only say that because you're using people already. Yeah. You're using other multiverse people that weren't part of the multiverse, and you're retconning to bring the other... You know, that's fine. It's a multiverse, so technically that old X-Men series was its own multiverse of this, whatever, you know. Yeah. Patrick Stewart's 82. And that's why the Fantastic Four movies they've already done can still exist in this whole thing because there's... 83. All of it does, yeah. yeah. I don't know. It's a... Uh, Takes some of the fun away from it with like just wondering like what the quality is going to be like, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's a lot to sustain for over a decade now, and was it fourteen years? It's fifteen now? years now. Fifteen. Yeah. Two thousand eight was Iron Man. I mean, I mean, is it new? Well, you got to think about it this way too. They got new writers though, right? It's not. What's the, same. the first one that came out? Iron Man, yeah. and then that one's still thought of as pretty great. And then next was Hulk. Next was Iron Man two. Hulk came out after that, though. Yeah, after Iron Man 2. It did? Yeah, I think so. Iron Man 2, wasn't it the next uh, in the... I'm pretty sure Iron Man 2 released before either of those did. And then oh, Captain right. America and Thor came out, or, yeah, slightly after. Maybe it was Hulk, Hulk then out. Iron Man 2, and then Captain America yes. and uh, Thor. But since Hulk was universal and it kind of was a but thing... nobody thinks the Hulk or Thor is a good movie, really. No. Those like, first two ones are terrible. So I'm saying the quality's always been this way with hit or miss. And yes. they just weren't doing as much before. And once they made Avengers, it was like, oh, shit, this is real good. This could get real good. Well, the other issue we're seeing is we're seeing a lot of new characters come in, but a lot of these are second-generation heroes that are getting mentored by their first, whereas the other introductions we had, that was like the first time the character was there, so they're getting mentored by their peers, not by someone's just an older version of Ant Man. It, it was just an older version of whatever. So it was Iron Man, Hulk, then Iron Man. 10. Takes away some of the mystique of introducing a new character and like how they get where they're going. <sighs> well, I don't think that any MCU, only a few MCU movies have been good. But yeah. I, but I think they had stronger casts in the beginning, or also charismatic actors that people really liked. I don't think there's a lot of actors left that people are really digging i mean you still have paul rudd and hemsworth but yeah captain america's gone your iron man's gone they're not really using i don't give a fuck about iron man though and captain america i'm people, fine with but most people do most people are really digging yeah but fuck them because iron man two and three are both not very good <laughs> yeah but people liked him and i think he saved those movies I think he's the worst part of some of them because his humor is so cringe. I cringe when Iron Man's on screen and he talks and says shit, usually. That, but. He's that rich, outdated, out-of-touch dude, which kind of makes sense, but at the same time... That's why time, everybody yeah. likes him. He's the most basic motherfucker with the, the funny, little people snappy love, little jokes that people are... Love uh, people love billionaires. People love billionaires. Yeah. I don't, know. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they need to cool their jets for a little bit and not release 20 things a year well and it seems like that's kind of what they're doing they're pumping the brakes like hey focus on qua well, quality and of course, over the quantity the controversy over the cgi artists too just oh the forced overtime and the payments and just, all that shit yeah well yeah not enough and time, that's industry wide not enough well. money that's industry wide and sometimes so. you can see the poor quality of oh the yeah cgi you could in this yeah. several several times i mean you know, in some of these movies they're even doing edits after the movie's been released they're just Editing yeah. the master oh, file what, and re-uploading what, what was that recent thing? Uh, yeah, they were doing it in... Oh, they did it to the last Thor movie, right? Yeah, oh, and Spider-Man. Spider-Man, yeah. Yeah, spider Yeah, they're still doing... Probably it. Doctor Strange. Or they edited it once it kept Disney+, Plus. I think it was. Mm -hmm. Well, they've done some of that, too, but I think they've... But yeah, they did. They changed something in Spider-Man while still at the theater, I think it was. Which, okay, that's, that's fine. You know, I understand everyone wants to hit that deadline, right? Here's the release date. we got to have it done. Work till the release date. But you got to pay people fair for the work they're doing. So there's a lot of well, things to figure out you, in the you industry. You can't have right them working 80 hours a week either, though, regardless of... No. Because he's, this is never ending, so... Yeah, there's never a shortage of the work right now, right? If you have the skill set and you can handle the pressure, which is... Honestly, I think what's pushed a lot of people out of the industry is this the amount of work they're doing and the volume of forced overtime or whatever else, but... But, yeah. but I felt like I was watching people in front of a green screen the whole time. It didn't seem seamless and it didn't seem integrated well, it very seemed, well. Well, to be honest, it seemed like even times where this could be like a practical set, at least, with green screen stuff in the background, like where they could be stepping, you think 
they would construct this, you could tell it was CG too, and it looked like shit. So they my, didn't even construct floors. It looked like it was just literally standing in front of green everything or walking for, on green. for ninety percent of this. And they've already proven to us they have better technology than that. Even George Lucas didn't do that shit. He'd build like a staircase and everything that blends in and looks like an environment, even yeah, trees and add, a ground, and then the green screen background and you'd light it all. And what was the budget for this movie? I have no idea. But what I'm saying, like you look at Mandalorian, right, and you see how they're using those video screens to project on, so it's actually. A, is objects it, in they the tried camera? to use that for this but they couldn't because they wanted to be such big scope and mandalorian shot like you know close camera yeah pretty I get much that. but you still could have shot scenes like that that would have looked a lot better than it turned out 200 million hmm. and nothing against the artists i mean the cgi they're doing right now looks amazing as most final products but it doesn't make me feel like i'm there hmm this movie would have worked a lot better had they animated the main characters CGI as well, right? Well, also, the whole movie should have just been the when they're changing body. sizes in there, it means nothing either. No, I'm big now. What do you mean you're big now? You're not big. You're fucking tiny still. Yeah, and why is that the biggest you can get? Yeah, I don't understand this. Any and Ant Man and the Wasp, you forget that he's having a conversation. What's the biggest you ever got? Uh, nineteen feet. Oh, I did fifty feet. Well, they're also entering the quantum realm through a portal, like it's an alternate universe as opposed to shrinking. Yes. You notice this? That doesn't make much sense. Well, they get zapped into this one this time, too. But they shrunk during that. It looked like they went zoom. Yeah. At least at the beginning. Or at least in the other ways, they're always shrinking. It's like a malfunction of the pin particles. So so theoretically, couldn't they just grow and get out if they have the pin particles? There's so many weird, what the hell? The Ant-Man stuff is screwed up like that because it's wonky. Did you guys watch anything in advance of this? Like what? what? I rewatched Marvel movies? Ant Man, Ant Man and the Wasp, um, Infinity War, and Endgame. No, you didn't watch Civil War. Uh-uh. I thought I thought about it, but I was like, yeah, Civil War is better than Ant Man too. So it's thirty million below projected box office globally. It'll still do okay, I'm sure. I just don't give as much of a fuck. And then again, right before. This movie comes out, AMC talks about their new premium ticket pricing. So they're going to price gouge people right before this comes out. Yeah, you're not going to get as many people going to the box office when one of the largest theater chains in the company pulls some shit like that right at release. Mm. Yeah. (sighs) A lot of... Oh, it's an interesting time. Like I try to be optimistic about it because I love, love seeing movies so much and I enjoy these stories that are intertwined and it's... Oh yeah. Is it the fatigue of it all? Is it the quality? You I know, like you so. said, some of the hit, some of it's hit or miss, and some of the series could have just been a made for Disney well, Plus movie and in, just been a two-hour thing. Until for most of the time, the MCU's existed. It was like three movies a year, right? No TV shows. I mean, two thousand eight was the first one. <clears throat> Well, in the beginning, there was less, I guess. Yeah, they're really they, they slow. slowly ramped yeah. it up until they were doing three a year, and they're still doing three movies a year, but they're also doing the TV shows. So, like and it, three a year of those as well. It's only so. three movies. Yeah, but when you look this at year and last year and when next you year, look at the hours of Phase Four. How many hours that was compared? That was more than one, two, and three combined, I think, or close to it. But if you, all the TV because well, of the TV we got shows, ten hour sure. TV shows too. Yes, yeah. but I'm saying like, That's can they read five movies? Ten of them, basically. I mean, I don't know if there's actually 10, but there's well, WandaVision, Captain America, close. Hawkeye, uh, what else? She-Hulk, Moon Knight, Miss Marvel. What if? What if? Some of the ones, shit I didn't even watch. Yeah, and some of the shit you don't even know where it's going now. Like, Moon Knight was set up, and you're like, are they going to do any more of them? I didn't even finish Moon, White, Moon Knight. And I then was... I didn't finish Miss Marvel either. I started both, and eventually was like, eh. I finished them, but Moon Knight should have been a movie. And Miss Marvel should have been its own movie, right? Yeah, Condense Moon Knight would have been better just as a movie for sure. And I don't care if you make it a Disney Plus movie, because they're talking about budgets and the money they're making. Well, to make a 10-episode series, that's what? Well, it's not like the TV shows are suffering in quality, at least. That it's not like... No, but... They still feel like you're watching MCU shit, but it's... You balloon your budget out when you shoot that much more content over that much time. Why not just make a made-for-TV movie? That's what I'm saying. You See, save this the Ant-Man money. Quantumania is like the end of these these three big ones that we've had that are doing this multiverse shit recently. Mm-hmm. The Spider-Man one, Doctor Strange, and this one. Yeah. The best out of them, 
is Doctor Strange. But there's got to be more because the Canes are from multiverse and they're but destroyed it's like, multiverse. Yeah, exactly. But it's just like, okay, the Spider-Man one looked great. And when we got there, it was like, the first viewing was great. And I watched it since and I'm like... I didn't like it at all. Um, well, part of it is the nostalgia trick on the first viewing, right? Mm-hmm. It's not that it's terrible, but it's very kind of predictable and does what it needs to do. <sighs> and parts of it are annoying as hell. It's still cool and fun, but it's like very like, okay. I... It feels like you trimmed 20 minutes out of that movie to get rid of some of the bullshit, and it's a much better film. And I watched Doctor Strange again, and I was like, okay, this only has like that sort of middle sequence where you have Multiverse Professor shit. X yeah. and everything else. The rest of it's pretty much still Doctor Strange heavy, and I'm like, all right, it still holds up pretty well with while, while exploring multiverse shit, but being about Doctor Strange very much so. I think it's pretty decent, especially compared to this shit fest. <laughs> yeah. So how would you rate it out of out of uh, hold ten? On. Hold on, I thought of this as well as at the theater. Three out of ten. I thought of this. What we're rating would be? Fuck. Uh, what we rate it as? What the thing would be? Three ants. Three no, out, out of ten pen particles. How many would it be? Out of ranked in the MCU, out like, of how many pairs of stretched lips? Damn it! I thought I thought of what it would be. And I <laughs> you know what I'm remember, getting at? I can't remember now. Oh, holes! Was it? Was that one? Oh, of the, oh, holes the one the guy, guy. Yeah. How that many was, holes? <laughs> I think that's what that it was. was one of the cringeworthy <laughs> things. Like, didn't they make a movie about that? Like no, an animated movie. I about actually that liked thing? the joke when he the guy wants holes or whatever, and he says, Humans "How many have holes seven. do you have?" And yeah, and he says he has seven, and, and then, then Paul Rudd counts. I was like, that that was funny. At one point, he thought of his pee hole. Yes. Um, right, like on the curve of MCU movies or movies in general, like as a movie or as an MCU movie. Uh, MCU movie for giggles. Uh, three out of ten. Is that is that? Yours? That's what I give it a, a, a three. Three, really? three out of oh, ten. Wow. Because it's better than some Marvel movies, which are on a curve. I, I'll say five. If it's, it's on it's a very middle for no. a Marvel curve, it's three for me. But it's still the worst Ant Man movie. Absolutely. Yeah, I gotta go five too, because Paul Rudd alone carries th- a decent amount of this for me. I don't think it deserves more than a five. No, there's no way. And it's not that it's What is it better but than? But I don't think it's visually good either. What like, is I was it distracted better than? by it? It's, it's better, better than, than and then the first uh, Thor. Wakanda. It's movie. not. I wouldn't say it's better than the first Thor. I'd say it's better than the second one. Absolutely, though. It's better than Black Panther, but uh, it's not better than Black Panther. <laughs> I thought that. it's better than Wakanda Forever because they really fucked that up. It's not better than any <laughs> Captain America movie. No, it's better than Iron Ant Man or yeah, Iron Man Three. It's better than Iron Man Three. No, I like I like Iron Man Two a lot. To be know. honest. But Iron Man 3, 3 has like. the whole fucking exploding people thing. Yeah, and but I really never, like, fucking... I never wanted to shoot myself, though, when I was watching it. Justin Hammer in Iron Man 2 makes it all worth it. He's fucking gold. I wasn't... I don't think I was bored watching it. I don't know. We'd almost have to do the, the fourth stack ranking. The Thor again. was absolutely shit, too, compared... To, like, it's just... Uh, oh. Love and Thunder. Love and Thunder. Yeah, I didn't like that. Um, I didn't even see it, Charles. <laughs> I Definitely watched. better than that. That is the. Uh, I haven't watched. That's the other one that's rotted. Rotten s- tomatoes. Straight up won't watch it. That's rot rotted. What is it called? Certified rotten. Yeah, that and this is the only two MCU movies that are certified rotten. Which is funny. Which how do you take a movie like this? Cast is good. Michael Douglas, Michelle Pfeiffer, Paul Rudd, Evangeline Lilly. Like they're great. And then even mm-hmm. Kang guy. Yeah, even the guy as Kang is great. Jonathan like, Majors, he's good. I thought Lee Majors. He's great because but. he shows like this depth of up and down. Like you know, he's like can be this real humble guy, but then he has this anger side that's different than what Thanos yeah. was. And but. I like the way his armor looked. He had a good aesthetic of like how they yeah. are portraying Kang. I thought that was fine. Most of what ruins this movie for me isn't him, and it's not the main Ant Man cast. It's all these background characters that I don't give a well, fuck to about me, in the quantum realm. I didn't need like erase all that bullshit out of there and like just show me like how they got to get out of there. If you want. Janet and Hank in this movie, they should have been in there the same way that Hank was in the first two. Both of them. I didn't need to see them in the whole fucking movie. Same with Cassie. Didn't need it. I don't care. Yeah. Don't care. 
Ant-Man and the Wasp, fine. I'm good with that. But the rest of there's three other like, yeah five fucking characters were, I'm following around here like secondary characters. that I don't really give a fuck about. Well, the acting for the people that are in it, as far as the main they cast, did a good job. I'm just they saying did they didn't need to write them in there. Yeah, no, that's all. And then you have Michelle Pfeiffer who delivers this kind of flat performance based on the material, right? I you know she's just coming across as an asshole for the first two thirds of the movie when she won't say well, anything. They're like yeah they're walking and they're like. We can't talk about this. Why not? We're walking, and it's going to take hours. Just fucking explain yourself, you dumb asshole. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I thought Paul. I thought Ant Man was going to die. After everybody went through the portal, and he was still there, and he was just getting the shit beat out of him. I thought. I thought they could have just left him there, but at the same time, you know, well, they that's have what I thought. Baby, it was going to be like a. You know, a they have a quantum tunnel to go get him. So. But I thought he was going to die. Yeah, I thought that. I didn't think he was going to die, but I think they're. I thought they're going to trap die. him there with Kang, and then yeah. pick that up somewhere else. Yeah. And then what was the mid credit scene? The mid credit scene was all the Kangs uniting together. Oh, see, which I thought was dumb because none of them even looked cool either. They all just looked like, lame, and they were like all like King Tut. They were looking at the camera and going, and I was just like, "What?" And he was doing like, weird voices. Is, and we it, have every Kang variant here, whatever the fuck. That like, felt like the Imperial Senate. Like just would, like would the Kangs get along or would they fight amongst themselves? I don't. That's part of what they, they talked like, about in Loki. You almost have to like see the Loki to hear them fought, fighting amongst themselves, but. United against whatever else, you know. So, and then the post credits with Loki was and Loki. Mobius, mm-hmm. yeah, which is Victor Timely, which is one of the variants of. So, yeah, it felt like it's setting this things up. You lot. know, it now that I've seen this and Loki, it feels like they're setting up Phase Five, but I didn't really care for the way they presented it. Do you think the casual moviegoer knows what the fuck's going on? I don't. I think you're losing a <laughs> lot because I don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> I very much I mean, really? do, but I've watched, eh, well, <laughs> a lot of MCU movies I've watched four or five times. Because I don't know much about like, Marvel. If not a little bit more on a few of them that I really like. But I was never a Marvel guy, so I don't know the comic book. You were never a DC guy. You're a fucking Batman guy. With well, a little bit of the people that surround Batman well, and some of the TV shows. You probably watched Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman, didn't you? Yeah, but I was like 12. Okay. That's what I thought. Yeah, with a focus on Batman and Superman, but I was still I still was a DC guy, not a Marvel guy. So I don't know the references. I don't know the the, the most source I material. gave a shit about DC outside of strictly Batman was the Justice League and Teen Titans cartoons of the early two thousands. I liked both mm-hmm. of those a lot. Well, and it's interesting too because Marvel is utilizing traditional comic book stories to make the MCU, but they're also going off the Ultimate series, which rebooted and retconned. But, I, but I'm saying the average viewer that doesn't didn't read. Com- Marvel comics that doesn't understand multiverse. Do that's they, why do they know what the fuck's going on. That's why they're explaining it the way they are, though. That's why some of this is so drug. What out. about the average? Oh yeah, there's and then the average viewer that's not watching the TV shows. Thirty percent of the dialogue in this movie is them trying to explain whatever horseshit science to the viewer, mm-hmm. and it's bad. I mean, half of our population doesn't believe in basic science, so they're completely lost, right? Probably multiverses. They're not going to believe that. Well, yeah, and then if you watched, if you actually watch the Eternals, the Eternals say that nothing else is ever actually made. It's made by something else. So it like even that contradicts its other stuff. But the Eternals was another movie with like you get this cast and you look at the cast on paper and you're like, and then, okay. And then you watch the movie. And, you're and like, then viewers like oh. me that don't really rewatch the movies either, and you got to remember all this stuff, and then you're kind of zoned out during the TV shows. And I, I don't know. Like I forgot Kane was even in the Loki show. What he was, right? Mm-hmm. Well, it was a variant of him. It wasn't right. even called Kang. It was called like the one who remains or some. Was shit. it the same actor? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it was all set up for him, and he's like, "You don't want to deal with other versions." But I was of me. very bored during the Loki show. I didn't like that one. There were moments, but it was too drawn but out. Would have been a better, better movie. Again, I also yeah. don't like. I like binge watching shows and stuff like that. I, you know, like I watch Loki week to week because we were reviewing it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, because then you're stuck in the predicament of Netflix has you trained to watch something all at once, but for a subscriber standpoint, I, everyone I wants you to be in a week by week. I think basis. serialized shows work better binged. Yeah, they because do you, because you don't because get each the episode between. doesn't have a beginning, middle, and end. Yeah, like an episodic show. So I think it works better to watch it like a ten hour movie. Than yeah, because essentially you're looking at a mini series <clears throat> here, right? That's what it is, like a t- eight to ten episode series and a lot of these could have been movies because there's just so much filler in them and yeah. it would have saved a lot there's of money so much by not 
because they have two to three hour story idea and they stretch it over 10 hours and there's so much filler that i'm bored and not i all don't care bad. i don't care enough about marvel and these characters and the stories to be invested so to have the filler i'm not you know i don't care well, to your point, the average viewer doesn't know that some of the stuff's based off old comic series from, like, since Marvel Comics started. Mm. Some of it's based off the Ultimate Marvel, which is where you get a lot of these newer characters that are coming in, or how you get these alternate origin stories. Like, Venom in the Ultimate Marvels matches more of Venom the movie, but if you watched Venom in the 90s cartoon, where you read the Marvel books about it, that was very much an alternate take on his origin story with spider-man well and the ultimates that doesn't happen that way is it a good thing that sony still owns all the spider-man shit because you imagine how many more mcu movies we'd probably have um i don't know that's that's questionable because you know they also have a craven the hunter movie coming out and to be honest with you like i don't give a fuck about that in the least what is it is that an mcu movie that's a spider-man villain that they're making his own movie about for so through sony Yes, because hmm. Sony and yeah, the Spider Verse or whatever. Because that's yeah. Sony; they're just making the Spider-Man villain movies because they're. It's connected to Venom, which is now connected to the MCU, though. Well, in yeah. theory, though, now that they have the interest, they can go and make more Andrew Garfield movies. They can go and make whatever. Supposedly, Spider-Man they are movies. with Venom. That's the word on the street, but we'll see. I'm not opposed to that. I just want some fun, fresh stuff, right? You know. Uh, Feels like we really drug that out, so. Uh, yeah, I'm fucking, I'm mentally exhausted from thinking about this, and I just want to fucking hit end on the podcast for this so bad. <laughs> All like, right, well, Ant-Man just pissed me off just thinking and talking about it. I wasn't uh, as mad when I left the movie. Neither was I. And then we but just now I'm just pissed things. the yeah. fuck off. I think right. my expectations were high enough to where this was disappointing. Mine weren't, just because I've, I'd, you know, I'd seen people rating it poorly, but I was I like, too. it's got to be good. They're setting up the whole fucking thing. I just didn't think it could be that bad. But I like Ant-Man. Honestly, if I'm watching Paul Rudd on Jerk screen off. i'm not having a bad time but this can't be well, that's why i said it's a five like there's well, things that are going on in this but all the background characters and all the changes they retconned let us know what you think of quantum mania <laughs> no don't in we already comments. know we've already heard it and we beat the dead horse comment something about a movie you do like i don't know anything comment and what movie you think is better than this in the mcu i watch comment yes i just went to your patreon at patreon.com slash strange little video and i subscribed I can't wait you know what to I listen watched? to all the content. You know what I watched the night before Quantumania? Another Paul Rudd film. Dinner for Schmucks. That's good. Oh, did you lose a fucking bet? That yeah. movie's fucking awful. It's, it's not that great, but it's Ooh. better than Quantumania. <laughs> God, no. I, I, sh- I had a better time watching. Hard limit. <laughs> That's one you of You don't those. like Steve Carell because you got it out no, for I'm, the office. Steve Carell's fine. Hmm. I don't have it out for the office. <laughs> It's not my fault that show sucks dick. <laughs> Let us know what you think about The Office. It's not my comment. fault it's a fucking personally, personality trait for every white woman. <laughs> yeah. No, Everyone's like, I'm, white I'm, women love The Office and Parks and Rec. So. No, they love The Office, Nick. They don't even both. fucking. They love Don't both. play. They love both. Don't play. They, love they, they put The Office in their dating profile. They do not with Parks and Rec. I've seen it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's because The Office is better. The Office is dog shit. Oh my god, I'm going to slam my head in the door over here. I'm about to as well. <laughs> All right. Is there uh, room for two? Can you subscribe everybody. to our Patreon before I slam my head in the door? I'm going to need some money for the doctor visit. If you subs- if 100 people subscribe to it, we'll slam our heads in the door and put it on Patreon for you to see. If you like The Office, subscribe to our Patreon. Fuck The Office. And fuck you too. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> to return some videotapes. To return some